Hi, Steve. Hi, Leah. What a joy to be with you. I love having you on today. How are you? Good. Good. I see. Yes, yeah, saw you Tuesday night. That was a good meeting. That was so good, so refreshing, so encouraging. Thank you again for you know coming to our church. Thank you for pouring into us. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, you guys are really good soil to sow in, into. We're definitely different <laughs> than the average. You are definitely different. And I mean, the passion, the commitment, the innovative thinking, the uh, diligence, the overcoming attitude, resilience, you name it, you got it. Amen. <laughs> Church of faith. Oh, boy. <laughs> you really are. First of all, tell us a little bit more about Igniting Hope, who you are. You know, I know you've written many books. I'm on staff at Bethel Church, Redding, California. And I also, Wendy and I also have our own ministry called Igniting Hope Ministries. We were impacted by a quote by Francis Frangipan in the early 90s, where he said, every area of your life that doesn't glisten with hope means you're believing a lie. And that area is a stronghold of the devil in your life. Mm. Every area of your life that doesn't glisten with hope means you're believing a lie. Uh, and that area is a stronghold of the devil in your life. And that just really put us on this journey of we'd already surrendered our hearts to the Lord of just learning how to surrender our beliefs. And we got the revelation that... Um, Every belief or conclusion that we made that didn't have hope attached to it was under the influence of a lie. Mm. And so really, as you look at our bio and you think about, you know, who we are, uh, there's other things, obviously, that the Lord has done and shown us. But that was really kind of what put us in our lane, so to speak. And we got so personally transformed by understanding hope. You know, we, you know, First Corinthians 13 says at the end of the chapter, now these three things remain faith, hope, and love. And we had pursued love, we had pursued faith, but we didn't really understand the place of hope mm. and, and how important it was. I just had this, I'll have, I hope for, uh, you know, good things in heaven and hope was more of a wishful thing rather than a real core value and a core part of my life and, and so that's led to changing how I see myself how I see other people how I lead and it's created this ministry called Igniting Hope Ministries and we have a, written a lot of books and online courses podcasts like you do a, a lot of things to release hope yeah Tell us the difference of faith by itself, hope by itself. And then when you combine both faith and hope together, the power, you know, that exudes from that. Okay. Well, let me uh, start off by giving you two definitions of hope that I believe will help in this understanding. First of all, hope is the belief that the future will be better than the present. And I have the power to help make it so. I'll say that again. Hope is the belief that the future will be better than the present, and I have the power to help make it so. Mm. The other definition that I really like is that hope is an overall optimistic attitude about the future based on the goodness and promises of God. Hope is an overall optimistic attitude about the future based on the goodness and promises of God. So if we try to share the difference between uh, faith and hope, here's how I see it. I, I see faith as being very specific uh, as far as what we're believing for, while hope is more general as far as what we're believing for. Faith says this, this is going to happen. I'm believing it's going to happen. Uh, this prayer those. will be answered. Obviously, faith has a big point, but Hope yeah. says, well, I really don't know what's going to happen, but good things are coming. Amen. Good things are coming. In, in uh, Psalm 27, the psalmist said, uh, I would have lost heart unless I believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. 
And so this this whole thing about hope is what really uh, really keeps us moving forward. It energizes us. But if we're a faith person without hope, we have a very difficult time overcoming disappointment mm -hmm. because uh, faith people without hope tend to put all their eggs in one basket. This has to happen or I can't really live. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting for this to happen, to live. I, I, I need this prayer to be answered. I need to move into what I believe is my purpose in life. Uh, the the prophetic words or whatever over me. Well, uh, I, I need even, I need this person to be elected or it's all over. And, and again, we, we, we believe for things, but, but when we don't have hope, then we are, I believe we're deceived into thinking that, okay, again, if that doesn't happen, then I, I can't live. I can't thrive. But hope people, hope people have this attitude. They say that while I'm waiting for this to manifest, to happen, I'm going to thrive. Mm. And even if it doesn't happen the way I want it to, I'm going to thrive. And hope is the safety net for when what we believe for in faith does not happen. And we've all had things that we believe for and we need to continue to believe for. But but we're we don't win every battle. <laughs> you know, we, uh, we're on this journey of growing into and experiencing the promises of God and. And when we don't win them all, and when we're a hope person, we're we're, we're much more adaptable. Mm -hmm. I, I use the analogy of a faith person without hope. Uh, their GPS system would say this to them when they made a wrong turn or the road is blocked. The GPS would say, you just blew it. This trip is over. Pull the car <laughs> over. Uh, because I can't get you to where you need to be from here. <laughs> but but faith people have hope, have this uh, recalculating uh, thing in them that says, well, you know, that 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 didn't happen the way I wanted it to. But but the Lord is so good at recalculating us that he will get us to where we need to go. And that's how hope people think. Mm hmm be a faith person they only see the plan a but the hope person sees the more flexible yeah. right because hope people believe there's many options to how god can get us into what we're where we need to be in our, our purpose and influence faith people right. without hope i uh, have a limited thing and I, I like to think of of just one of our you know favorite verses in psalms psalm 37 verse 4 where it says delight yourself in the lord and he will give you the desires of your heart and and the delighter it says the delighter in that verse is delighting with unfulfilled desires there's things that that person wants to see happen that haven't happened yet and so the delighting is a is really it's a, it's what the bible also calls soul prosperity it's a we're delighting we're we're saying thank you lord but i believe the delighter's mantra uh is this woohoo lord i can't wait to see what you're going to do in this situation i can't wait and amen <laughs> faith people without hope often carry around a spirit of heaviness on mm -hmm. them while they're waiting for what they're believing for happen. Maybe it's a family member that they wanna see saved or turned around. Maybe it's a financial situation. Maybe it's even in the national news. And, and you know, there's just a heaviness that, and I've experienced that heaviness. I've walked in it. And sometimes I, you know, I slip back into it. And, oh, I don't like it. And th that's really a symptom of a lack of hope with our faith. 
And that's so true. I can relate to all this, actually. <laughs> Even when you said that, I had a few people at church that know my story turn around and look at me and nod their head, you know, <laughs> because I've been waiting um, about 10 years for specific, you know, it takes great faith to believe. Most people would have given up by now, but I know that I know that I know God told me that this is going to happen. There are these amazing promises but in the natural, it looks completely dead and impossible. It's like a Noah story, you know, Abraham having a child at 100. I mean, it's like Bible story like, right? And, you know, it's only God's grace that I am able to do this well. But then, you know, the hope in me is the one that still has a ministry and is thriving and is sharing my story, even though, you know, it looks dead and believing in God. And people tell me, how did you do you have the joy that you have? You know, most people would not have the joy you have with all that has been stripped away from you, all that you're waiting on, all that's happened to you and mm. to still have the joy of the Lord. But I also can relate to you know, moments, thank God, you know, they like, like you said, short moments, though, not seasons, but shorter moments where I feel like, Lord, I need a refreshment of your hope, because I start to feel that heaviness, and that weariness and the weight. I mean, this hasn't been like, you know, a season, this is 10 years. So there's been times where yeah. I have to shake myself up and, you know, really draw into my secret place and get back to the heart of God and his goodness and be reminded of who he is and that he is the God of his word. He's not man that he would change his mind. You know, when he speaks a word, it comes to pass. And I have to believe that, it, you know, it has to be a revelation, not head knowledge, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I love that. And it's so powerful to hear that. Yeah. While you're waiting for the manifestation of the promise you're still moving forward. You're not neutralized by that. And and I've I've got an area too in my life too that uh, man, I'm believing for. And you know these these unfulfilled promises at times can create a shame on our life, can create mm -hmm. a disqualification. You know that that we can battle within our own thinking and. And I, I believe, you know, uh, all of us who, everybody who's listening right now uh, probably has at least one area that's screaming at them, this really is hopeless. Right. <laughs> it, it, and it's, it's in that, that, wow, okay, yeah, we do what we, what we believe the Lord's told us to do about those things, believing and we're stirring it up, but we do need to keep moving forward in our lives and one of my favorite declarations that I love to make declarations is that my my forward movement in life causes red seas to part amen and you're moving forward and yeah it, it, in exodus 14 15 you know moses god says to moses why are you crying out to me tell my people to move forward and i'm sure <laughs> moses thought hey i thought that's called prayer but that's <laughs> what we're supposed to do yeah. and it's in the forward movement that's a key for breakthrough uh, in, in our lives. Right, right. There's there's a difference between waiting and waiting well, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. My favorite hope verse that also really leads into this discussion of gladness, cheerfulness, joy, is Romans 15, 13, where it says, now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So that verse basically says, now may the God of hope fill you in believing. And so the increasing, increasing hope in our life is the evidence we're renewing our mind with truth instead of lies. Decreasing hope in our lives is the evidence that we're renewing our mind with lies instead of truth but what's fascinating about that verse it says now may the god of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing and i like to say hope has two buddies who hang out with him one is all joy the other is called peace you're always going to find them together it's kind of like jesus said the truth will make you free well truth first makes us free in our emotions with an increase of hope all joy and peace. And 
it's the joy piece. <laughs> joy is, is the one that it took me the longest to accept mm. because under a religious mindset, it's impossible to be joyful because if we're joyful, we're not getting it. If we really got it, we'd understand God doesn't even like us. He's about had enough of us. You know, that's, that's how the religious mindset thinks. And, but I began to really study uh, the verses in the Bible about joy. And there, there's just so many, many good ones. And one of them that I was talking about the other night with you and the rest of the leaders there was uh, Hebrews 1 9 where it says Jesus was anointed with the oil of gladness above all his companions now Jesus had an anointing he had many anointings that were manifested but one of the uh, anointings that manifested in his life was gladness mm. and to, I, I, I like to say it this way, great leaders, great parents, great friends, emerging leaders, they create a culture of gladness around them. They create a culture of gladness in what they're leading and what they're influencing, because to be glad, we have to let go of a lot of things. <laughs> you know, and, and, uh, I, because we have to look at perfectionism, control, manipulation, offense, uh, victim mindset, uh, shame, unworthy, whatever, you name it. There's a lot of things to let go of, to be glad. I like to say to laugh, you have to let go of something. And so even in my own home with my wife, we've been married 45 years. Uh, you know, part of me says, well, I don't want to be glad. Because if I'm glad, she'll think she's okay, and then she'll stop working on the things I think she should work on. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, a lot of you know a lot of people just are non-glad as a punishment to the people around them. And, and I'm not saying we never we never have brave communication. We're we're laughing all the time. There's times where. Yeah, and we need to talk about some stuff, or we may need to work some things out. But if it's a, if we are, if we don't have a culture of gladness, mm. then that's going to work against us. And that's been one of the things um, uh, I, I wrote. A, one of the books I wrote is called "The Culture of Empowerment: How to Champion People." And in, in that, it really talks a lot about the belief systems that we have about the people we're leading and influencing. And, and, and gladness is a manifestation that we're trusting God. We've overcome a lot of our own issues and, uh, you know, self-limiting things in us and that we really love and like the people around us. Yeah, that's good. Gladness to me, is more of like a childlikeness, enjoying life, mindset, and, and behavior. Yeah, I actually just posted that last night. Never lose your childlike wonder. Like even as adults going through a lot, you know, you could tend to be jaded by life and circumstances and disappointments, but God wants us to keep our childlike faith and wonder. I love that. My, my definition of joy is joy is the childlike uh, excitement, wonder, and adventure of working with God instead of working for God. That's so good. We're kind of like the mouse and the elephant going across the bridge. And when they get to the other side of the bridge, the mouse says to the elephant, boy, we sure shook that bridge, didn't we? <laughs> right. That's, that's how our, you know, our relationship with the Lord, that's where I want to get to. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from him, we can do no good thing. <laughs> no. Well, I love your message of hope, especially, you know, in the day and age that we're in now in this hour, such an on-time message and word for today in our culture, you know, with everything happening and culture, the indoctrination of children, you know, the enemy running these streets, you know, getting bolder than ever, you know, government, you know, inflation, pandemics. I mean, it's just been one thing after another, after another. 
what would be message that you would give for just people today that maybe are struggling to have hope? A couple things. One is our hopelessness about the problem is a bigger problem than the problem. And that to me is uh, a game changer mm. because we're, it, it, it says in, in Romans 12 too, we're transformed by the renewing of our mind. And, and so if we're going to see transformation personally and around us in, in what we touch, uh, it doesn't come from trying harder. And I'm all for diligence. I'm all for wisdom. But it's really going to come from renewing our minds with something higher than what we're feeling and experiencing. Mm -hmm. And so just knowing, okay, that my lack of hope is an indicator that I'm believing a lie. And it's very difficult to influence that which we do not have hope for. Mm. It's very difficult to influence whether it's ourselves. <laughs> you know, the most challenging person for me to lead is me. Right. You know, because I, <laughs> uh, you know, I know me really well, and there's some things about me I don't like. You know, and I got to lead me. So having You've hope lived for with me, yourself for a long time. <laughs> I have, <laughs> and, and, and being, you know, so. I, my lack of hope for me in a particular area is a bigger problem than what's going on in that particular area. Mm -hmm. Because if I don't, maybe I've got a personal weakness thing or I've got a relational thing with somebody or financial. If I try to change things without changing the beliefs surrounding those areas of my life, I'm probably not going to see long-lasting transformation mm. so my lack of hope for that family member is a bigger problem than what that family member is doing now i it doesn't mean i'm not doing other things you know maybe setting boundaries and relationships communication you know wisdom but ultimately i need to understand that okay i got to go to the root of why i don't have hope and say, what is the lie? Whether the lie is, is that, uh, you know, my prayers aren't working, uh, they're too far gone, I, I've I've made too many mistakes in, in this relationship or in finances to, to be, you know, pull the lie out because lies sound really real in the darkness of our thinking, but they're laughable when you bring them out to the light of language and, and the light of language and words and compare them to the word of God. So that's one thing I would say, even nationally, my, my, my lack of hope for my nation is a bigger problem than what's going on in my nation. Mm. Now, that may, that may challenge some people, you know, I mean, it challenges me. That may say, well, I'm not so, well, I, I just say pray about that because it, it, it's like the Lord, he, he basically told Wendy and I this, I give you permission to be hopeless about anything I'm hopeless about. Wow, which is and, nothing. <laughs> and never once have we <laughs> prayed and said, Lord, are you hopeless about this? I've never once have we heard him say, yes, we are. We're hopeless. We're completely stumped here in heaven <laughs> and there's no solutions. This is too far gone. Right. <laughs> So that's one thing I, that I'd say is that our hopelessness about a problem is a bigger problem than a problem. The other thing that I would say is uh, these bones shall live. Amen. These bones shall live. You know, the story in Ezekiel 37, it's a really powerful story and, and it speaks volumes to us today where God showed the prophet Ezekiel a valley of very dry bones. They weren't just dry. They were very dry. Mm -hmm. And the Lord's not afraid of us seeing how dry things are. You know, whether it's a dry nation, dry morality, uh, dry uh, politics, dry, uh, you know, families, churches, economy, w whatever. He's not afraid of us seeing how dry things are. Faith is not denial. Faith doesn't just stick its head in the sand and say there are no problems. No, it realizes there are. But what faith does is faith doesn't get its belief out of the dryness. It, we don't, 
we don't deny it's dry, but we don't call it dry. And, and so the Lord showed Ezekiel that valley of dry bones, and he asked him a question. He says, Ezekiel, can these bones live? And that's one of the most penetrating questions that God will ever ask us. He may, you know, especially as we relate that to areas of our own lives, things that we're seeing. You know, Steve, Steve, can that family member live? Can can Steve, can this part of your life live? Steve, you know, uh, can your city live? And the answer is, by, by the way, the answer is always yes. Right. But, but it's interesting, you know, Ezekiel responds, God says, can these bones live? He says, oh, Lord God, you know. And, and basically, Ezekiel had a passive mindset where, you know, it seems like his answer would be, and because he's waiting for the Lord to do something. And then God says, hey, Ezekiel, I want, you prophesy to the bones. You speak to the bones. You tell them they're going to live. You tell them because God has to partner with somebody who has hope to accomplish his will. Amen. He, he needs somebody who believes things can get better. Basically, the question is, Ezekiel, do you believe these bones have a good future? And he needs to find somebody. And I love this because I believe after love, hope is the most powerful leadership quality there is. Our hope level determines our influence level. And he who is the most hope has the most influence. Wow. So good. So good. And I know you're big on declarations. Like you have a oh. clicker where you do a hundred declarations a day. So yep. how important, oh, there it goes. Mm -hmm. click, click. This is a great meeting. People are going to get touched because of this podcast. That's right. People will Lives never be the same changing. again. That's right. How important are declarations when it comes to, you know, speaking declarations, speaking over yourself when it comes to hope is having declarations that we speak over ourselves every day in our circumstances. Well, they're very important because you, you can't think a lie when you speak the truth. Mm. That's one thing. And I remember I was pastoring a small rural church with my wife and children in the, in the 90s and, and Central Nevada, four hours from Las Vegas. And um, in the beginning of the, that time, I was hardly influencing anybody. I was, uh, I had bad beliefs about me. I had bad beliefs about my geographical location. I had bad beliefs about the people that I was leading. And, um, and I remember the Lord, that's when he started going after this hope thing with me. And he said, my lack of hope was a bigger problem than what was going on. And, and so I, I felt compelled. I, I, read you know some verses that it really stood out to me like proverbs 18 21 death and life is in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruit i saw that i saw james 3 where it says uh our, the tongue is like a bit in a horse's mouth and a rudder on a ship and i got started getting revelation that what we say is going to direct our lives i saw romans 4 17 where it says God who gives life to the dead by calling those things that are not as though they they were. And I realized I was always just calling things the way they were. You know, I, I wasn't calling things or naming things with what God was saying. And, and so I felt um, impressed in my spirit to start making declarations because also it says Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing. And so I wanted to hear things. And I said, well, uh, I can control the level of truth I hear by me saying it. So I don't have to wait for someone else to come up. And like it says, let the weak say I'm strong. It doesn't say let the weak wait for someone else to come up to you and say you're strong. And so I, I felt impressed to say things like, uh, I I greatly or radically influence nations. Well, when I first thought about that, I thought, well, no, Lord, I, I'm not going to say that because you said thou shalt not lie. <laughs> yeah, you know, you, you know, could you please be consistent? <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so uh, I said, shouldn't I wait until I'm radically influencing nations before I say I'm radically influencing nations? And he said this. He said, well, Steve. Do you wait for an apple tree to have apples on it before you call it an apple tree? Ooh, that's good. 
I said, God always gets you with those one-liners, zingers. I know. I'm just trying to, you know, <laughs> I'm trying to help God out, you know, and, and, and he just keeps tweaking my thinking. And I said, well, no, Lord, we don't wait for an apple tree to have apples on it before we call it an apple tree. And, and then I heard this, well, Steve, you, you don't get your identity out of what you've done. You get your identity out of what you're created to do. Mm. Come on, Jesus. Yeah. And so apple trees are created of apples. Even if the apple isn't hanging on it yet, we're not confused about its identity. It's just too young to have it. It's not mature enough to have it, but it's an apple tree. And so yeah. see, God sees our whole story, right? So he sees what we don't know yet, right? Yeah, I mean, because we, and... we, we tend to have, see, our self-limiting beliefs based on feelings and past experience are the biggest roadblock, in my opinion, to God's promises manifesting and that fruit, so to speak, hanging on us. So I began to make declarations. And I mean, it was really, it was really hard. I mean, it was really, I mean, I'd say, I'd say things like, you know, I greatly influence nations. I'm a great leader. By the way, I wasn't telling other people this. I was telling me, <laughs> this is in my private time. I'm talking to me. I'm saying these out loud. And my strongholds in my mind really fought against it because my strongholds knew that when I started saying these things that they, they weren't going to last. Because I had believed for so long that there was something uniquely wrong with me. Mm. I am less than other leaders. I don't have the gift of prophecy. I'm not powerful. Uh, I, I'm, I don't do you know, relationships deeply, uh, whatever. And, but, and right. they were all beliefs based on my feelings and my past, not what he said. And so then I'm starting to say, okay, I'm starting to look in the Bible and, you know, because uh, I mean, it says in Matthew 28, go into all the world. Well, that's, I thought that was for somebody else. You know? <laughs> so, well, no, that's for everybody. So I started declaring, I'm one who goes around, I go all the world. I, I, right. I impact people for the gospel. And, and I said, I, I, I just say I write books before I ever wrote books. I'm an author. Yeah, they're right here. Yeah, I, I'm an author. The warfare in my mind. And so, and, and, it's something I believe one of the biggest changes in my life. And I believe for the listeners that declaring God's promise over us and what we believe he's told us and what he's put in our heart. And we start saying them and creating identity statements out of it. And then what it does is that it starts to break off those self-limiting beliefs, those negative strongholds. And we start calling those things that are not. I called those things in my life that weren't manifesting. The leadership, my uh, just even my emotions and, and, and a lot of things. And, and I, yeah, I'm sold on making declarations. I love it. Well, I do a blog with each podcast. So I'll definitely put all your resources out there. Great. If people want to connect with us, you can find us at ignitinghope.com and ignitinghopeacademy.com, ignitinghope youtube igniting hope facebook instagram you know you can talk about a little bit about your books yeah i've written books on mindsets i have a book called victorious mindsets it's a devotional 50 victorious mindsets because the the renewing of the mind isn't by osmosis or just by reading the bible or going to church it's by intentionally saying I'm not believing this anymore. I'm going to believe this. One of the greatest revelations we'll ever get is that we can choose what to believe. I've written some other devotionals, Igniting Joy, Igniting Hope in 40 Days. This year, Igniting Joy in 40 Days is coming out. I've got Igniting Faith in 40 Days. Uh, Let's Just Laugh at That is a fun book that breaks off lies. It's also a devotional. So if people, those kind of books are so fun just to have laying around the house, open up. Uh, you know, at any time, any page, you're going to get something. I wrote a book called You're Crazy If You Don't Talk to Yourself. Uh, <laughs> you hear the opposite. You're crazy if you do talk to yeah. yourself. That's 
So that the series on words is you're crazy if you don't talk to yourself. I have a book called Declarations, Unlocking Your Future, which gives 30 biblical reasons why we make declarations. So if people want to know, okay, the biblical basis for that in a greater way. And then just recently released a book called Declare It, which has 96 different life situations or areas everything from family to ministry to finances to health to future etc 15 different declarations for them and the most recent book i've written is called fully convince you and it's probably the most important book i've written because it really encapsulates a lot of the concepts of beliefs and hope and joy into the book and because really being fully convinced is a biblical term that it says about Abraham in Romans 4, he became fully convinced in God's promise. In Romans 14, 5, it talks, it says, one person esteems one day above another, another esteems every day alike, let each be fully convinced in his own mind. And so there's many things, there's obviously, there's black and white things that the scripture, uh, you know, is clear on. But there's many areas where the Lord, we go through a process of developing a good decision-making process and for choices that we make. And then we need to attach faith and be fully convinced in those. Mm. Because it says in Romans 14, 23, whatever is not a faith is sin. And sin is an archery term, which means miss the mark. Mm. So whatever is not a faith, we miss the mark. So if I'm not attaching faith, to who I am, what I'm doing, uh, my responsibilities, my commitments, uh, or then then I'm missing the mark. And so the book really helps break off doubt, double-mindedness, insecurity, inferior inferiority, guilt, uh, those those things, uh, doing things out of duty and obligation, go to the root of what that is. And we have a 12-week course, excuse me, an eight-week course that goes with that book. It's uh, it called Fully Convinced. It's the same, same title. And if somebody really wanted to dive into what was what I shared about today, and that would be my recommendation is to go to ignitinghopeacademy.com, find the course, Fully Convinced. You get a PDF version of the book with the course. You can certainly buy a, a hard copy through Amazon or, or wherever. And but that is uh, I am I say in the, the book, I write on the back cover kind of like it's uh, a little bit of a bomb. I like to throw into people's thinking a bad decision made in faith has a greater likelihood of success than a good decision made in doubt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I unpack that. I unpack yeah. that in the book. And I believe that. And, and many Christians, sincere Christians, are the worst decision makers mm. because of a haunting feeling that they're just missing it. I'm not doing right. I'm not doing this enough. I'm not doing that enough. I'm not enough. Uh, or, uh, you know, or yeah. And so just really breaking that thing off and attaching faith to who we are and what we're doing. Amen. Looking at it through the lens of faith. That's right. Yes. And Wendy's got the book, Victorious Emotions. Well, you're so funny. You threw this to me in the crowd. So <laughs> there it is. I did. I remember that. I'm glad yeah. I caught it. <laughs> it's not just, it's for men, women. It's just for, it's really her journey uh, of just overcoming. We all battle emotions and, right. you know, they're just, She's got some great insights, great help with that. There's a journal that goes with that that you can go deeper in that people can purchase. And so yeah, we have a we have a lot, we have a lot of free things on our website, declaration lists, blogs. I do a blog every Monday that comes out, podcast comes out every week that's connected with the the blog. And by the way, thank you so much for what you do in your podcast blogs and reaching people and your heart to serve people and your heart to bring breakthrough it, you're i can just tell that you're you really are making a difference and you want to be right on the cutting edge of what the lord's saying and doing so thank you
Thank you so much. Yeah, I've been doing Lens of Faith. God called me to start it in 2016. And I said, who's going to read another blog out there, you know? And he said, do it. I'm going to speak through you. And he even yep. downloaded the name Lens of Faith. I'm a wedding photographer by profession. And I'm walking a radical faith journey right now. So it really is who I am as a person, but Lens of Faith. And then um, right before the pandemic, actually, you know, we didn't know it was going to exist. It was like in January, February, before the pandemic, he said, you know, start the podcast. I didn't know anything about podcasts. I YouTube videoed how to podcast, you know, I ended up meeting people that told me what mic to get, you know, kind of helped me along. I didn't know anything about that. And um, so about three years now, I've been podcasting in it's just going to go on from here. I know he's told me to write my first book a couple of years ago. I started it, you know, um, I haven't really finished it. And I've been really feeling like I need to, you know, you encourage me and inspire me with all your books. Like, you know, if I can just get one out there. It's <laughs> well, the first one is the most challenging. I tell oh, people, okay. I get your first book out, make it short, because the, the problem is, that I noticed that I talked to a lot of people is that perfectionism gets on us and we, you know, we, we start writing and then we get more revelation insights. And then, you know, I got to add, and, and, and yeah. it's, sometimes it's just hard to finish. And, and I think it's so, harder to um, like, in my case, I know the book is my story that in the natural has not come to pass. So it's like the miracle in the middle. Usually, you know, it's easier to write about something that has come to fruition and it it's kind of safe you know, to, to write about or talk yeah. about, right. But when you're still waiting in the natural for God to do something, but he's saying, I want you to write it as if I already did it. That's another level that even I'm being stretched. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm, being so I, stretched I Steve, I'm telling you, <laughs> I bless you with wisdom and how to communicate that. And just a, yes, a, a just a completion anointing on you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm being so stretched. I thought I had great faith. Now I'm like, oh, he's trying to take me further. <laughs> it's like... He tends to do that. He's keep coming <laughs> deeper in the river. Come on. <laughs> right about I... something that looks dead. <laughs> As yes. if it was alive and well. <laughs> oh, my. Well, it's the next it's, level. It's really next it's level next right level. now. <laughs> nobody can say it like you. And nobody can say it like the people who are listening. We all have a story. All of our stories at one level are incomplete. And, and so, yeah, just inviting people into our process is what really gives hope to people. Yeah, amen. Well, this has been a great show. We're going to wrap up. I always have my guests pray us out. Can you pray us out? Yeah. Pray for those that maybe are struggling with hope or just anything that you feel the Holy Spirit is leading you to pray for. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Just thank you for those that you have drawn to listen to this podcast, to be with us today. And Lord, it's no accident that they're, they're with us. And I just right now, just release a grace over every person of hope, uh, of, of revelation, uh, uh, of a breaking off of lies and a revelation of the truth to replace those lies. In the name of Jesus, I speak breakthrough. I, I speak a uh, the ability to not only love themselves, but to like themselves. And Lord, again, I thank you for those who are hearing this. And I ask you that just even in this moment, that you would just give them a key a key revelation, uh, a key encounter with you to unlock themselves and others like never before. Bless them in their health, their finances, in their influence, in their families. Thank you, Father, for the very fact that they're with us today. It indicates the type of person that they are, hungry for growth, hungry for breakthrough, hungry to make an, in, an impact in this world. And I thank you that you're honoring that heart and just blessing them and blessing people through them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing about hope today. What a needed message this is. 
You're welcome. And thank you for inviting me. Thank you so much. Great to connect with you. And again, thanks for what you're doing. Thank you. We're in it together, blogging and podcasting for the kingdom. 